you everybody so much for being here. I'm thrilled to be in this uh, amazing space with these uh, four brilliant women. Um, my name's Kara Ober. I'm the editor and publisher of Be More Art Magazine, which is a publication uh, mainly based in Baltimore. We write about art and culture with a strong focus on women. And um, I'm really excited to have this conversation with this, with this group. And um, one goal of the publication that I'm responsible for is bringing artists together with people who are not artists and having conversations because we have more in common and more to learn from each other than we have apart. And it was really interesting in the green room even earlier with this group. We have two uh, political activists, two artists whose work can be considered as activist work. And even as we sort of negotiated a, an initial conversation, there's a lot of, um, and I think, Jackie, you said it really well in terms of the women that you're trying to reach. There's an issue of confidence and vulnerability and wanting to feel like, um, wanting to feel like you're smart, wanting to feel like you have something to say that's going to really be seen and heard. So in this space, I think it's, I think it's interesting to sort of consider all of you artists. And if you look up a definition of artist, there's really no one definition. But for me, it's someone who sees a problem that there currently is no answer to, and you're willing to dig in your heels, apply creative problem-solving skills, and, and come up with a solution. And I would say, in this context, in this place, that would be true for everybody on stage. Um, so in, in getting this conversation started, um, I don't know if we want to start at the end with Kim, um, not to put you on the spot, um, but in terms of your work as an artist and an activist and what you're doing right now, um, could you share a little bit about where you're feeling the most energy in response to what you're doing and also where you're feeling the most resistance and sort of pushback. So in a way it's asking you about what's sort of your, your success and also some challenges that you're dealing with right now. Um, thank you. That's a great question. And I'm sad I have to start it out because I don't have any time to think. <laughs> and I'm an introvert and I need some time to think. Um, no, I would say that I would say that the energy that I'm getting, it, okay, so the energy that I'm getting that's been positive has been awesome. And I think the pushback around the work is coming from myself around, is this enough? And so I'm, I'm thinking really critically around the role of this work and, and kind of really critically around the role of the artist and really critically around the role of an artist who holds privilege and power. So like, is it enough for me to make work around what's happening and for it to be funny and a parody and for that to be the only site of justice um, is aesthetic justice, right? And I think that when I get positive feedback around it, it's like, cool, that's great, but how does this influence this next step for myself and how can I use this as a tool um, around like political action? And so I want to be really, um, I, I just want to investigate within myself like the way that feedback is um, hindering or helping the way I push the project forward. Can we just come on down the line and talk a little bit about what, where, are you, where are you finding success right now and feeling the most energy and then where are you feeling some pushback in your work? So I'm not really feeling any pushback in my work, um, but that's I think that's, that's amazing. as a result of the circles that I am currently operating in. Um, I self-identify as a, a racial equity champion, but I am also a democratic strategist. And I have spent um, the last several years uh, working specifically with uh, black women nationwide who have already been organizing in their communities. And so for me, the energy is around understanding what's at stake specifically for our people. 
Um, again, I had referenced sort of during my presentation that we have always been pragmatic voters. Um, it's not like we've always had you know, our ideal choice uh, on the ballot, but we've always voted for what was in the best interest of not only ourselves, but also our communities. Mm -hmm. So as I travel across the country uh, engaging with uh, black women specifically, um, the energy is around understanding that we have saved this country multiple times. Again, the concept of democracy that didn't even include us um, and that it is up to us while we reject the idea of having to, uh, we realize that the reality is, is that um, it's up to us to actually do what we've always done, which is to mobilize our people to get out the vote and we intend to do that. So again, just sort of thinking about, you know, while some people will in fact be celebrating uh, next year, we will actually be in battle mode. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. All right, how about Jackie? I think for me the energy is from volunteers and especially folks in the states that we've been working, they feel really grateful to have some tools to talk to their neighbors. I think they've been trying to navigate and wondering how can they do a better job instead of just getting mad or upset or you know casting people out. Like how do you bridge and make connection and bring people with you? So I've had lots of positive energy for and gratitude for the support to do that. Um, I think the um, challenge has mostly come from white women. Um, I, my experience with um, black women activists has been like, it is about damn time. Mm -hmm. Go get your cousins. This is Please. not my job to do. Please. Um, and like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so I never have trouble <laughs> with Thank my women you. of color. <laughs> uh, and I have a lot of white women who um, almost always people ask me what a black woman think and they want if, to know if I could bring a black woman with me to like tell them it's okay to do this work. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a talk about the labor that requires of black women to make us feel comfortable about doing our work around racial justice and like why, you know, I appreciate the sentiment of <laughs> following and that is yet another time we're asking black women to do the labor for us to give us permission to do the work we need to do so I think that's been a that's a journey I'm on every single time I go out and it's an opening for a conversation and I invite white women with me to say it's time to go get our cousins and let's go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> um, I actually haven't experienced a ton of pushback. It's not, I, f I feel pretty welcome even by the journalism community. I think that there are a lot of questions about um, how to be better about you know, storytelling, I mean, or articles and the frameworks behind these stories. And so um, it's a visual guide. Um, I think, you know, when I first began doing the work, um, I kind of went rogue and just was kind of pasting it up at night. And, um, and so people would write on it. Um, I think one of the first times that I put it up in Brooklyn in a subway, someone crossed out teenager and maybe put drug dealing thug or something. Mm. Um, and then someone erased that mm. and put a Basquiat crown, right? So there's a, there was a certain kind of protectiveness about the work that was really interesting to me. Um, that it became this kind of territorial thing, this in particular Michael Brown work. Um, and then the wall space that I had in Brooklyn was um, offered to me by a black woman business owner there and a business called Sincerely Tommy. And so I, I would just use that wall space to put up larger works. And then, you know, I used to start it really late at night because I was kind of embarrassed to try to put the work up with view, like I didn't like to be watched. So mm -hmm. I was going out at like two in the morning and then gradually I kind of moved it earlier because I just couldn't stay up that late. Um, and people were waiting to see what I had um, fixed or changed, just fix is the word that they like to use. Um, and it was really interesting because there was, I think people felt like the edits um, or the annotations, they were fair. And so it, it felt accessible. And I think that that's kind of, in some ways, what really protected the series from some of the criticism is that it's not wrong, right? It's not the, the adjustments that are made to the work. They, um, they're fair enough that I think people just don't really feel like they can argue. The, the Michael Brown one, of course, I've, I've heard people say, you know, you've seen the video of him in the shop and there's some arguments around that, but for the, by and large, no. I haven't experienced. 
push back. That's, yeah. That's great. Um, so we are in a museum uh, devoted to women artists. And uh, this museum came about because of uh, structural inequities and imbalances that still exist in the art world, um, which mirrors the larger world in general. And um, while I think it's incredibly valuable to have a space where women can have safety and uh, build community and be, um, you know, sort of free from certain boundaries and structures, I have to say that um, sometimes I, I get a little frustrated um, because I feel like more men need to be paying attention, mm. right? So sometimes we're, we're preaching to the choir. We're telling women, you know, what the problems are, what our strategies are, how to fix the problem, how to work together. But I really also feel like, um, okay, maybe we are the majority of the population, but um, we also have an obligation to, to bring men into this conversation. So do you have any um, specific strategies or thoughts around the women only uh, gathering and the value of that versus um, making something widely available to everyone? And I think in particular, um, our two political activists spoke about this. Both of you spoke about this really um, clearly in your presentations in terms of bringing others into the conversation, making them feel comfortable um, in, order, in order to, um, you know, to have a productive conversation. So strategies for uh, working with people who are different, in, including uh, men. Who wants to start? How about Jackie? Because you're, you're kind of, you're dealing with this every day. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is um, for the target audience that I'm going after, um, I was open to what is it that they needed. I wanted to make sure that what whatever I did was like user design, that, that it would be what would make them, um, would help us reach our goals. So I was open to the possibility that they would want to be in um, uh, gender neutral spaces. Um, but when we did the interviews, what they said to us is they don't want us to be anti-man but they really know from their own lived experience what it's like to be in a political conversation with men. And that their experience is that they're gonna get, they're gonna shut down or feel shut down. Um, and that so they actually wanted women only spaces to start. Um, and actually they wanted to start on the internet because they wanted to be in, a, first of all, they didn't think women around them would uh, share that, share this kind of progressive point of view. So they wanted to have a diverse um, environment and they thought that the, the um, internet would provide that, but they also wanted to be able to um, uh, leave if it got heated, so lots of right to comfort, lots of fear of d discomfort, and then they also wanted to wait and not speak until they were ready. So as a, for them, it was a lot of needing to see other people talk first, needing to see that validation, and in um, spaces with men, women and men, I think we all know that it tends to be that men will speak up first, speak lo lo longer, speak louder. And so at least for the work I'm doing, it was important to meet them where they were and start with women. So for me, if it is not yet obvious, I am not in the business of making people feel comfortable. Uh, so um, with that, I will note that I think that it is um, a both and. I don't think that it's one or the other. I think that there are clearly spaces where black women need to gather and discuss issues um, that are pertinent specifically to us. But I also think culturally uh, we view, and from a worldview perspective I mean, um, black women and, and black men are inextric inextricably linked. And so there's no real separation between us. We understand that when we are voting that is a decision for not just ourselves, but again, for our communities. But there are issues um, that you know, we need to tackle as women. So we are dealing with you know, both racism and sexism and some of the other isms, um, which we don't have time to, to get into here. Um, so for me, I think it's a both and. I don't think mm -hmm. it's a one or the other. And I think that that speaks to sort of certainly my style in terms of organizing. Um, we have to do what works essentially. And so if that means that we need to, you know, have conversations with ourselves in order to, you know, mobilize ourselves, that's one thing. But then if we also need to have sort of broader conversations with community members, I think we do that. 
So for me, it is truly a collective approach, um, but we need to do what we need to do individually as well. And then for the, the two artists who are officially the artists sitting up here on the <laughs> panel. Um, so yeah, officially uh, 2020 is the year of the woman, right? A lot of cultural institutions are claiming 2020. Um, in Baltimore, there was just an announcement um, I think it was in the Washington Post recently that the Baltimore Museum is only going to show women artists for the next year. They're only going to acquire works for women artists. And, and while that sounds really great, um, I think it's interesting that we are sitting here in a museum that has been doing exactly that for 30 years. And hmm. while there are maybe things to be gained you know, through these headlines. Um, there's also the, the reality of sort of day to day and the work that we're doing that we've been doing possibly without headlines. And um, having noted today that this 100 year anniversary is not shared by black women mm. in terms of the, having the right to vote. What is an appropriate response to a cultural institution that wants to promote a progressive agenda um, but is possibly doing so without doing its research or having uh, sort of a, a very privileged uh, position vis-a-vis -vis that, that issue. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Alex or, or Kim, <laughs> what, what do you, do you well, I was gonna you, bite the other question. Well, I'll, you suggest? <laughs> I'll go first because I'm gonna make it short. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like I, I, I work a lot, I work mostly outside of institutional spaces and mm -hmm. I don't put a lot of stake um, in what the institutions can do. I think it's really awesome when they do it well. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I just think that we have to build our own <coughs> stuff outside of the institution. Can you offer language that you would like an institution to use? Or anyone up here, if you want to, what would be more accurate or more helpful? You know, I actually don't know. I mean, I am someone who started as a, as a person who working in the, in the public space. And so I didn't necessarily rely on institutions um, for space. I mean, I definitely rely on them for funding. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's, it's almost like the, the calls for diversity, right? I hear this a lot. Like people ask me, you know, if you know the newspapers are more diverse, some of these problems can be avoided. And I think there's multi-step, right? And so in a way, I think, you know, this call to kind of only acquire women's work, it's different, but maybe it's a step in a number of steps. And so I, I like to look at those gestures as we don't know, but we're gonna try something and move from there. And I'm, so I think there's, sometimes those things are important, you know? Um, I did a talk once in London, I think one of the panelists with me was um, a photo editor at. I want to say The Guardian, um, and they were grappling with this problem of diversity and, and you know, images by women, images of women, and started really kind of working a little on like a quota system, like trying to really track the numbers. Um, and in some ways, it's, it was a little like of a, a weird concept, but it was getting people in the room to have conversations about why there weren't more images by women or why there weren't more images of women, and so I think Anytime you can kind of create a system or a way of getting people to kind of question things in a different way, um, it's important. And so I think the question is, will that gesture get people to kind of ask, you know, questions about the hierarchy um, or what art is more valuable or, or want it? Then I think it can be an important thing. If it just ends up being this kind of weird Band-Aid thing, like, hey, we got a black intern at the paper, come tell us if this is racist, then we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the kind of the way I, I see that. It depends on what it generates. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably an important measure that maybe won't be able to see up front, right? Yeah. yeah. And then in terms of language around this anniversary, I'm wondering about, would you, would you correct someone? Would you just say it's not for, it's not for everyone? How, is there a way to sort of inform people that this anniversary is is not universally shared, and anybody on stage wants to 
You're all looking at I'm me. Looking at I guess you. that's time for me. No, to I'm know. looking at her. I'm looking at you. I'm like, I kind of feel like this talked about this, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the company you I, keep. I think we know. Well, it's, know. It's, it's no huge though. secret um, yeah. in the black community that we didn't get the right to vote uh, in in 1920. No one's so, celebrating this where I'm um, from, right? Okay. Nobody's saying it's okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's good in my circles, we're aware. We 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 know that doesn't mean anything for us. And how do we make others aware in a way that they'll hear it? Um, so, um, I think having these two women, uh, in the space is, is helpful. Um, I play to my strengths and my strengths include mobilizing the black community for collective political action. Um, I do not need anybody wearing paper clips or safety pins or whatever it is that folks are, you know, wearing to identify as a true ally. I think that, um, folks who are allies are women like this who are actually doing the work and talking to those people who would vote for someone who was clearly against them. Um, so again, in, in terms of language, it's, yeah. I think that's a perspective that, you know, we already know. So there's, you know, there's no real need to sort of have those meaningful conversations, if you will, in our community, because it's, everybody knows. Yeah. Um, but I will leave it up to them to determine language to, to <laughs> tackle their folks. <laughs> yeah. Jackie, what would you tell your, uh, the, the women that you're working with in, in terms of uh, celebrating this uh, anniversary? I think I probably would say that this is a moment in time where we should be looking at what the vote is now and how is it, we have structural issues right now. We saw that vote suppression happen, you know, in every election recently. Um, if you just look at Georgia, right, like so, and it continues. So I would say that I wouldn't say like, this is when we got the vote and this is when we got the vote. And like, although I think that history is important, I think I would say we have a problem with our democracy right now and we need to get out there and address voter suppression and, and protect votes as it stands now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, can we talk a little bit about your, uh, your relationship with media and social media and the way that you, you use that for strategic purposes or choose not to? Who wants it? I mean, I'll take it. Um, you know, so one of the things, and I spoke a little bit about starting to post the work, um, the Michael Brown work went up first. And I, I guess I'll talk about how social media supported me, right? Um, <laughs> Michael Brown um, work, I put up a teenager with promise in Brooklyn, and I printed that work, and I was using my own funding, um, which is a credit card, which quickly just maxed out. Mm -hmm. um, printing in color is really expensive. I know you know, that's why mm -hmm. your eyebrows went up. Yes. Um, but then the rental car and then the, you know, the friend that came with me to look out while I'm doing this totally illegal thing. Um, <laughs> and so because it's illegal, I wasn't, my name wasn't on the work. Um, and so it, it was just kind of out there anonymously. And one of the ways that it did pick up steam was um, on social media, particularly Instagram. And there, was a, there came a time when I did run out of money, and I don't think this, this wasn't widely publicized, because again, I wasn't supposed to be putting the work up, but someone, um, um, Lane Sell from Shoestring um, pr Press reached out and offered to fund um, or to print the work for free for me. Wow. Um, and that saved kind of the, the work, right? And so that's... Um, a huge way that I've been able to kind of use it. Uh, my Instagram is is a combination of me talking about art and talking about media and pointing to things that I think are problematic and talking about food. So I'm kind of, <laughs> Got I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of straddle the worlds. I don't, I, I use it in some ways to promote and I think people can ex expect me to kind of talk, talk about and share my, my work, but then it's uh, still also my personal space in a way. Yeah, but yeah, it saved my work. That's so cool. it's a huge benefit to me. That's amazing. Would you share it with us? What? Your Instagram? Oh, yeah. Um, at yes is Alex. Yes, it's Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Others for or against the medias? I mean, I use, I mean, I'm a graphic designer. Um, and so media, visual media language, visual um, language is how I communicate with people. And I think, you know, design, designers have God complexes most of the time because we know how important design is to manipulating people's psychology around opinions, mm -hmm. right? And so I use that as a tool to kind of get into people's, or to kind of 
try to poke holes at people's understandings of what they think they know. Um, and so for my work, I use social media as a thread to kind of validate it in a way that's like, whoa, is this real? Is, maybe this is real, they have an Instagram. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think, um, I mean, I use it, I think it's really important. Um, and that's like really the method that I'm, I'm, um, I'm kind of sitting with. Yeah. yeah. I'm a movement baby. Uh, and so there was no social media back when I learned to organize. So while I see tremendous value in social media, I am, my style includes, um, you know, interacting with people in, in, you know, homes and community spaces and sacred spaces where social media is not necessarily how we mobilize ourselves. So while again, I see the value in the use of social media, um, and I think that it is a critically important tool to be used. Um, specifically, talking about how you organize in the black community, it's not just sort of your high tech approaches, we're still very much high touch. And so that's the, the area that I focus on. That's nice, high, high touch sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And then, should I start? <laughs> okay. Okay, and then do you want to just real quick wrap it? Yeah, the one thing I'd say is that for the community that we organize, the, um, they have moved off of TV now. They're really dropping from cable totally. So it's all local news, which is all about fear and scarcity, and then social media. So we're, what we're actually trying to do is use social media as a place where our gals will talk to each other and share information. And that is actually where they tr the most their most trusted political information comes from other women. Mm -hmm. So if we can just get break that isolation and get other women to share via social media, that would be an opening for us. So that's a big part of our strategy, but it's also risky for them. So we're trying, to, we start with the private group. Okay, well, I think we're gonna continue this discussion downstairs at dinner, which I'm really looking forward to. So thank you everybody for being here. Before you. Before you go downstairs, um, I just wanted to give you all just, first of all, please let's give our panel, uh, uh, our conversationalists a hand. Um,